bless your name. Almighty God, bowing before your throne. I bless your name. I bless your name. Almighty God, bowing before your throne. I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name. Almighty God, bowing, bowing. Bless your name, Almighty God, bowing before your throne. I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name. Almighty God, bowing before your throne. Bowing before your throne. I bless your name. I bless your name. Almighty God. Almighty God, bowing before your throne. Bowing before your throne. I bless your name. I glorify, I glorify your holy name. Your holy name. Yahweh be magnified. Yahweh be magnified. I glorify, I glorify your holy name. Your holy name. Yahweh be magnified. Yahweh be magnified. I glorify, I glorify your holy name. Your holy name. Yahweh be magnified. Yahweh. Bless your name, Almighty God, bowing before your throne. I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name, Almighty God. Now we be magnified. Bowing before your throne. I bless your name. I bless your name, oh, oh, oh. Almighty God. Bowing before your throne. Bowing before your throne. I bless your name. Almighty God, bowing before your throne, I glorify your holy name. Your will be magnified. I glorify, I glorify. I glorify the holy name. Yahweh be magnified. Hiya. Wait for Jesus. We bless his name. For he is good. Yahweh be magnified. Or oh, wherever you are seated, just wait. Wherever you are seated, just wait. Wherever you sit, just wave. Wherever you sit, just wave. Higher thunder. Wave for Jesus. I glorify your holy name. Your wimpy man be fine. I glorify. I glorify.
And the last time, the last time, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Ebenezer, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, Eta, Ta, Ta, Eta, Ta, Ta, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, Jesus Christ, Ebenezer, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, Eta, Ta, Ta, Eta, Ta, Ta, I bless your name, I bless your name. We can talk about it. Everybody has an issue that is paining him or her. Pain is happening within us, pain is happening around us. People that we love are in pain. It seems that whether you are old or young, whether you are rich or poor, whether you're single or married, it doesn't matter your social status. At one point in life, you will meet pain. There is a pain in the, in the young people when they are betrayed by the people that are supposed to support them, that are supposed to nurture, protect, and guard them. They pain when their dreams are not actualized. When they move around and they don't see reason to live. Young people in this place, young people watching us from wherever you're watching us from. This is a fact that we are going through a very hard time. And sometimes we may not know what to do. There is actually deep pain when relationships do not work. When there is a strained relationship between a child and a parent, when there is a heavy interaction between an employer and an employee, when siblings cannot eat from the same table, there is pain. There is pain when an husband and a wife are working or now they are going to separate. Or now they are going to go separate ways now they are going to divorce. There is pain, friends. There is pain when an investment that you put so much capital, so much time doesn't work. It just goes down the drain. And you, you begin to be at a point where you cannot even provide for your basic needs. It is painful. Friends, it pains when the congregants in our church do not do the assignment. They do not support what the ministry is all about. They do not go out there and love the lost. They do not reach to the people who really need our love and our care. There is pain. There is pain when our programs, when our priorities are not what God's priorities are. There is pain and an heartbreaking one when the people that you relied on do not come through for you when you need them. When you are at a point you are calling somebody wanaangalia to your phone they don't pick it because they know you are in a particular pain. It is pain. It is heartbreaking.
It is painful, friends, when you take your loved one to the hospital, you see them suffer. You see them in pain. You spend the resources, everything that you've got. And at the end of the day, they depart. It is painful, friends, when as a citizen, When as a citizen, your government focuses on a different thing. And what is important is left undone. It is painful, friends. Our text today is First Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 19. And I would like us to read together. First Peter chapter 4 verses 12 to 19. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fairly trial when it comes upon you to test you. As though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you're blessed. Because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet even one suffers as a Christian let him not be ashamed, but let, let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Verses 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their soul to a faithful creator while being good. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we lift you, God, this morning. For you are good and you are faithful and you are gracious, King of glory, to our lives. My Father, Lord, despite what is happening around us and even within us, you have been faithful and you remain to be faithful, King of glory. My Father, for the few minutes we pray that, Lord, you're going to speak to us. You're going to encourage us, King of glory. You're going, Lord, to lift us, God, from where we are, King of glory. And then, my Father, I'm going to experience you more intimately, King of glory, in this time, King of glory. We lift you because you love us and you care about us. I will pray that, Lord, I will be a vessel that is cleansed, sanctified for your use. And it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Our topic today is relying on God in moments of pain. Relying on God in moments of pain. I've begun by highlighting a few things that are a pain in our lives. Just a few, because if we go through, each and every one of us, we're going through a situation that some of us cannot even share. If you even think about it, tears flow. And in the text that we've read, Peter is exhorting Christians. He's speaking to us. He's telling us, beloved, People loved of God. People known by God. People that have been saved. The people that God cares about. is calling us beloved. Then he breaks the news to us. That do not be surprised. When trials come your way. Because they will. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. You will get at a point and you ask yourself, God, what have I done? Why is all this happening? What is next? The president of worship team have done a song. Let your will be done. Lord, let your will be done. It's a wonderful song. It's a wonderful prayer. Because at one point in time, friend, you will find yourself in that place. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to think about it. But it happens to all of us. And at that point, it is very easy for you as a Christian to run away from God. To say, God, I give up. I'm out of this place. But I have some good news for you this morning. That even in the moments of pain, we can lay on God. Praise Jesus. From the text, is Paul, uh, Peter is saying, we will go through trials of many kinds. As a Christian, you will go through trials of many kinds. Our Savior came as a human being so that he, may, he can come and save us. And we can see the pain. I believe the last time I was standing here, I was sharing about what was happening in Gethsemane. At one point, our Jesus is crying and telling the Father, if it is your will, let this cup pass. But Lord, not my will, but your will. At one point, people are looking to kill him. And then and he disappears. At one point, people are speaking heal about him. They're saying that you serve the devil. He is the son of God, but he's going through that. We can look from, through the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. And you are seeing people of God, people that the Lord loved, people that the Lord used going through pain, going through trials. Later on, you're going to be looking at Paul. Paul who went ahead to persecute and kill and jail Christian. He also faced a particular kind of pain. And we're going to be looking at that. So from the text we pick that we will go through many trials. The next thing is, even in that trial, rejoice in the suffering. Now, this is what we call oxymoronia. Don't worry about the big words. An oxymoron is where you use two opposite words in the same line. Like you say, bitter and the sweet. You say a love and hate relationship. You say when Tito got into the room, there was deafening silence. Oxmoron. Oxmoron. Rejoice in the suffering. How? In verse 14 we read. Actually verse 13. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering that you may also rejoice and be glad when his, his glory is revealed. Here Peter is pointing us to something bigger than we can ever imagine. One thing that we are tempted is we are tempted to plan and engage in the short term. Lord, what will happen to me this year? What am I going to do in the next five years? What is it going to happen for me? I'm about to retire. What next? As much as we speak about it as a long term, but it is in the short term. Because in that period, you will go through pain. In that period, there will be things happening in your life whereby only solution will be Jesus. But here Peter presents something bigger. He says, rejoice because of the glory that is coming. He says, now, let's leave what we are talking about and let's focus on what will happen that time when we made our Christ. Let's look at it. Let's picture it, friends. How glorifying it will be when you are comforted by the Lord that time. He says, yes, we can talk about what the Lord will do. And yes, there will be short-term solution. And yes, something will happen. And yes, we shall rejoice on this earth. It shall be well with us. We are not just going to wallow in pain all through our lives. There will be some goodness. 
there will be some breakthroughs. Hallelujah. But he says, in that breakthrough, there will be pain. But in that pain, I want you to rejoice in your suffering. When you look at verse 14, you, you see that there was some insult. You see that you're going to be rejected as a Christian. I keep being to a place and unatengwa to just because you're a Christian. And at that point is when you want to fit in. It is painful. It is. Remember your colleagues are sharing some stuff, but once you get in there, there is some deepening silence. They don't want you to be part of it. Part of it. It may not be that important, but it's, it's how we, we are social beings. We want to know what is happening around us. The next thing is, says the spirit of glory and of God rest on you. Now, this is an heavy statement. We cannot unpack it today. But it is the spirit of God and, and the spirit of glory and of God rest on you. You know what that makes you. Friends, Jesus was able to overcome because the spirit of God was upon him. And he says, we are co hires we are brothers. So, what I went through, it doesn't matter whether you go through it, you shall still overcome. Friends, it doesn't matter what is shaking you right now. It doesn't matter. If the spirit of glory and the spirit of God rests upon you, you will plow through it. The Lord will give you grace to go through it. And you're going to come the other side glorified. You're going to come the other side with a better name, a bigger name, a better strength. We see Meshach, Shedrach, and Abednego. They were no more, let me call them no more workers and employees in the government of Babylon. But they served the Lord. And they were snitched by one of the officials. But you guys, you're special. You're serving your God. And they are picked. And the king in his hanker says, The good thing is this. When the spirit of glory and the spirit of God is upon you, wherever you go in that thing, in that fire, you will find God there. The Lord will be in it. You have a case to answer. You are going to the court. You are going to see the doctor. You know what is happening. Don't you worry. Because God has already reported before you, go, you went there. And these brothers are thrown in the fire. They don't get burned. They're even walking around. And everybody is surprised. Everybody is, is, what is happening? Because even the guys who threw them, they were also victims. But the guys in there, they are safe. And the king comes around and they look at this and says, and the fourth one looks like son of God. Bring them out. When they came out, if you read your Bible well, they did not go back to the assignment that they were in. They were promoted immediately. When you go through the pain and you allow the Lord, you rely on the Lord in the pain, your promotion is sure. When you are going through the pain, it doesn't look like that is the case. But when you just tell him, God glorify yourself in my life. Let your will be done in my life. It shall happen. And you will see. And they will see. The spirit of glory and of God rests on you. I want to look at this particular example of Paul. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 22 and 26. This is Paul. Paul has been persecuting the church and the Paul goes through pain. The Paul who has written most of the epistles that we are reading has gone through pain. There is something that I will not handle today. It is the cause and the duration of pain. I will not like to handle that. 
but we are going to look at how do we rely on God in the day. Let's look at Paul's example. Verse 22 reads, Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder. I've been to prison more frequently. This is the pain of Paul. It's beginning. I have been flogged more severely and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. At nine, Maratano. Where were two poke and Billy? And you're not going to come to church. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from livers and in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger in the sea, and in danger from false believers. When else was here? This is Paul. He's telling us, friends, as long as you have chosen to follow Christ, it will not be a smooth ride. But God will be in the right. You will go through tribulation. At one point, you will feel like a reject. But I have some good news this morning. That you will never be ashamed to a point that the heathen will point that you say, these guys are trusted on the Lord and they look at him. You will never get to that point. One else was if you David says, I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Friends, this is not a formality. This is not a religious undertaking. This is life in fullness. We are trusting God who will take us through the pain and give us and glorify us for his sake. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. We represent a kingdom that is all powerful. I've been watching some documentaries and they're looking at how magnificent God's creation is. How powerful. At what speed the universe is moving. At what speed some of the stars are moving. At what speed some of our man-made tools are moving. We have an Apollo. You have an Apollo 1, Apollo 2. Those are um, they are called what? Orbits, yeah? Satellites. Last time I was checking, it was, uh, I don't know how many billions miles from Earth. Moving at an extremely high speed. That is how big our God is. And in that pain, sometimes just, this morning, we woke early morning, and uh, our daughter praise was not feeling well. When a jot of the heart was beating her for sharing that with Rev in the morning. And then I was just like, God, I'm supposed to be sharing. Do we go to the hospital? What do we do? I told my wife, let's pray. Let us pray. And then we thanked God for her. And we said, God, you will share your word this morning. God knows what to pause and lose when we are sick. God knows what to touch. God can speak to the blood vessel. God can speak to the cell and the cell will hear. That's the God that we serve. And we say, let's believe. And we prayed. I want to announce that by the time I was leaving the house, he was well. The pain that can you just appreciate God for that? Everybody in the room. That is what is happening to our lives. You just need to look at the situation that is not behaving well. 
this business, this job is mm. giving me stress. Tell God, you have created millions and millions of jobs. This one will not stress me out. You are going to either change it or create an environment in which we can prosper because we have trusted in you. That is what God is going to do in moments of pain. That is the case. There is a call to rely on God in the midst of the pain. In the midst of the cry. In the midst of the discouragement. In the midst of the uncertainty. In the midst of the crooked world. There is a call just to rely on God. Sometimes you will not have the energy to pray. Sometimes you will not have the zeal and the want to connect with God. But you can say, God, I'm here, and I don't know. And that is prayer. When else I see you? So if I analyze, let me look. How do we do it? How do we rely on God? Believe that God will make a way. The way at the beginning is not is not evident. But you believe that God will make a way. You will be at where Israelites were. Before them, in front of them, is a sea. On the sides are mountains. At a far distance, they can look at the armies of, of Egyptians coming, charged to take action. At this point in time, they knew we are dead. We are finished. Because if you told the Israelites at that point, like, you can pass through this, they would not have believed. But God will make a way. Moses just says, what do we do? Mungu anamuambia, just be still. Relax. Take tea. And be not so effective. But it's relax. What you can do when you are relaxed? For you are going to see the salvation of God. Friends, what you are waiting is to see the salvation of God in our life. Through the pain, the salvation of God. The other thing is, trust God to guide you in the way. The Bible tells us that trust in the Lord and they will make your paths straight. Trust in the Lord, not only to make a way, but to guide you in the way. It will not be straight. But he says he will make it straight. He will level every mountain. He will fill every valley. He will take care of every bridge. He will, when you get there, he will tell you what to do next. Sometimes we want to know the end. We want to know how our 10 years from now it will be like. But God doesn't do that. He wants us to trust us, to trust him for today and for tomorrow. The other thing is keep standing on God's promises. Just keep standing on God's promises. If he says you are healed, you are healed. If he says you are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the countryside, you are blessed. Keep standing on those promises. Keep holding on to God on the same. Something I wanted to read here. It is if the world gives you a lemon and you are standing God promises. Make a, make a lemonade. That will be a juice, a sweet one. If bitterness is all what you are facing every, every around you every time, from your family members, from your colleagues, from the people that, that are supposed to care for you, don't worry. Keep standing on God promises. The other thing is, finally, know that God is aware of the extent and the intensity of the pain. God is aware of the extent and the intensity of the pain. God understands our situation more than you can understand it. God saw it before it happened. He even might have allowed it, like in the case of Job. Job made a request. Uh, Satan made a request to touch Job. And God allowed it. And the people died, children of Job. Properties disappeared. 
health of Job was touched. God knew what he was doing. But the Bible records that he stood faithful. And he declares that I know my Redeemer liveth. God knows the extent. And God has a solution. This day, we begin a new week. See, we're working towards the end of this year. As we deal with uncertainties, and as we deal with pain, let's rely on God. Finally, brethren, whatever things, finally, brothers and the sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworth, think about such things. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because of this morning. Thank you, Lord, because you're telling us to rely you in the midst of pain. To rely you, God, when the things that we've planned to see them happen, they don't happen. To rely on you, King of glory, when what we see around us is darkness. My Father, we stand on this one thing. The Lord, you are our creator, you love us, and you care about us, King of glory. My Father and my God, would you bless us? My Father and my God, would you lead us, God, in this moment that we don't know what to do? My Father, when sicknesses are all around us, King of glory, when we are hearing drumbeats of, my Father, failure, of attacks, of bad waves, of diseases and the pandemics, my Father, our reliance is on you. We will trust you new and we will believe in you, King of glory. My Father, come through for us and lead us because we trust in you. Father, we ask for breakthroughs. We have been in the pain for long. Lord, give us a breakthrough, God. My Father, lead us in this moment. And the Lord, let us rejoice. Let us sing a new song. A song of victory. A song of favor. A song of your doing, King of glory. We thank you because each and every need has been met. My Father, we walk out of this place victorious and knowing that, Lord, you are going before us and you are going to win the battle for us. And it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Thank you so much.